Welcome to Game of Roses. This is Pace Case. This is Bachelor Clues, back from my jaunt down the hollowed halls of uh, Bachelor history. When we do these shows... Oh! That's correct. Post-jaunt. When we do these shows, a lot uh, is brought up for me. When you watch a new episode of The Bachelor, The Bachelorette, you can't help but go back down the pathways of history to remember the dates that are being referenced or replicated or... I mean, especially this episode. Exactly. Or paid homage to. And so in order to make our YouTube version of this, which by the way, this podcast is now on YouTube. If you'd like to watch along with us, just go to youtube.com and check it out on Game of Roses. I start pulling... And if you're on YouTube, like, subscribe comment what you think (laughs) yeah sound off (laughs) yeah sound off in those comments let us know but in order to make the youtube videos anytime we will be talking about historical references in this if you're watching on youtube you get to see the things we're referencing we we put little clips of the old seasons in if, if that's what we're talking about and so i'm pulling those clips and I just start watching. I just start watching stuff from Ben Higgins' season, Sean Lowe's season, etc. Et Save this it's for It's not a scream. It's a glorious <laughs> song from the bottom of the pit. Uh, I, I went back and I rewatched just some uh, incredible stuff from history, which we're going to talk about in this episode because so much of uh, Jen Tran's episode six of Historic Bachelor at season 21 had these little references to specifically Mm -hmm. a hometown date between Sean Lowe and his now wife and mother of his children, Catherine Giudici. Uh, For me, there was a reference to a Ben Higgins date that we'll get to (laughs) as well. Maybe other people didn't see that correlation, but I certainly did. Um, I mean, I can think of a a loose connection. We'll see. We'll see how loose it is. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, But we are about to break this down. For well, you. you have a you have a glimmer in your eye as you someone no who went down a jaunt or two. <laughs> so I'm very excited to record this well, podcast because with it's you. like a lot of times I'll remember kind of the the loose connections, as you're saying, or I'll remember like kind of the big picture thing. But then you go back and you watch it, and you're like, oh my god, that's mm. right, that happened, this happened, yeah. oh Jesus. So there was a lot of that for me. Really good minutia. Really good minutia. Some yeah. r- top tier minutia um but before we get to any of that we also must alert you to our watch parties in los angeles at 33 taps and silver lakes come there every monday night at 8 p.m to 10 p.m i'm out there anya is out there and we are uh, putting on a little show it's not just watching the bachelor with a bunch of people from the pit although that is fantastic to do we put on a little bit of a show as well we're giving out prizes mm-hmm. having contests doing a little commentary Clues during the doesn't do breaks. anything 75 percent. how can you how can you <laughs> I do it easily every day. Oh. That's <laughs> every aspect of my life. <laughs> okay. Well, to each their own, whatever strategies you employ, I congratulate you. Uh, we also have shot glasses that have love level demarcations at gameofroses.co. And we have a brand new t shirt commemorating Gen Trans historic march through Bachelorette Season 21 as the first Asian Bachelorette. We hope you'll uh, enjoy all those things. Now, are you ready, Pace K? Should we Mick dive Clues, into this? did you like my solo twin? I loved it. I thought you did a fantastic engagement job. Engagement special. Yeah, it was great. I loved uh, hearing about the okay. engagements. I liked when you were making predictions about, I think Clues would say this. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't have a specific example of that, but that made me laugh. Um, yeah, I thought it was fantastic. It loved was, your uh, if I may. Yeah. A lot of if I mays. Mm-hmm. I love the scream from the listener, too, with the intro video oh the scream was fantastic that was the top level absolutely a lot of high production value scream totally uh but now let's let's jump in pace case if you're ready to break this down oh oh no you're not um if enough people comment on the youtube for this episode i might try to do a watch party in minneapolis what i mean there won't be the powerpoint presentations right and uh, stuff, but I I might if if that certain threshold is reached right. in the engagement on the YouTube, I'll I'll do I'll it. I'll watch party at the wall. At the wall? Yeah, like Game of Thrones. You know how there was the wall in the north. I feel like you're. Oh. I feel like they've, you've been put on the wall in Minnesota. <laughs> That's so funny. Be- I have now seen the Minnesota Canada border. Oh wow! Is it a wall? Is it like Game the of Thrones? Lake border. Are there giants um, and no, it's, snow it's, demons it's on lakes. Oh. 
but fish mm. heard of them and there's a lot of um you know different cultural things like the focus on hockey sure you got that cool caught some walleye congrats caught some walleye. <laughs> Well, hopefully there will be a lot of hockey and walleye at the Game of Roses watch party of the North. All right. Let's get into this pace case. This is Game of Roses. Um, Game of Roses. All right. So we got episode six, August 12th, 2024. This teaser opens with Jen in her best dress stalking the hallways of the hotel saying, no one should tell me how I feel. Then she ambushes a bunch of the guys to ask where Sam is. And they're like, I don't know. Maybe check his room. And then we see her pushing a door open into Sam's room. This is the big third act twist that we're going to be waiting for to see what the hell is going on. And then we begin. It was very exciting. I don't know if the payoff was quite worth the excitement of the moment, but... But not because of Jen. We'll get to it. No. Jen, Jen did, it did her job like 100%. They had her act that Jen scene. Good job. And she acted that goddamn scene. <laughs> we'll get to it. I'm sure I'll say all this again. But when they make her walk into those guys, then into Spencer's room also. Have you seen Sam? Have you seen Sam? Yeah, checking all the rooms. I almost bought like that. Like she doesn't know what room he's in. Exactly. I almost bought that. So in those scenarios. I bought it. Producers are like, okay, Jen, you have to. She was to... waist prodding. Uh, yeah, she was a little bit. She's looking for Dark Lord Harrison <laughs> at the, uh, what was that resort in Palm Springs called? La Quinta. Um, La Quinta. At any rate. Ed Waysbrot going around looking for. Yeah, have you seen Chris? Harrison? I can't remember Claire. Yeah, it was Claire, it was Claire <laughs> he that he's looking for. I think. Claire, and the producers keep having him check on other doors, and then he ends up at Chris Harrison's room. Yeah, that was fantastic. A great moment in history. Um, all right, so mm -hmm. we get into this first, first portion. The first shot of the episode is of two a row of seagulls waiting with bated breath, just like we are about how Jen Tran is going to kick Sam McKinney's ass. Was this my creature of the week, these seagulls? No. You? No. We then see the skyline of Seattle, Washington. Obviously not. <laughs> I know. There was one creature Come that was on. like, what? We see the skyline of Seattle, Washington. Jen is walking this path, and she's ITM. We're in Seattle now, back in the U.S. A bunch of great drone shots of the cities. We see the guys scream, Jen, as they face the Great Wheel at Pier 57. And Jen ITMs that in New Zealand, she broke down her walls, and she was... Uh, when, and she felt seen. And she reminds us that next week is hometowns. We're already almost to playoffs. Can you believe this? This was the last regular season I, game. I am so excited. When they said they're going from seven to four, I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. It's like night one all over again, surviving the slaughter. I agree. I have a question for you, Clues. Yeah. Have you ever heard Seattle referred to as the Emerald City? I have. Oh, you have? I have indeed. Oh, I have not. That's I've thing. heard rainy. Well, yeah, definitely it rains, that whole area. I. It's also the city of grunge. This is where all the big grunge bands came from. If you're somebody who grew up in the 90s, <laughs> I'm not, that. of course. <laughs> I grew up in the 20 teens. I am 18 years old. Baby girl years clues. Old. Baby girl. This entire speech that Jen. Gen Alpha. <laughs> yeah, I'm Gen Alpha. Did you not know that? This entire speech that Jen is giving <laughs> is cobbled together from what sounds like voicemail messages it, it is terrible <laughs> roasted <laughs> like she didn't say any of this where she's like i'm going to hometowns next week i can see a future with all of them it's going to be the hardest decision yet none of it is together it's all played off face just get better at this if you're gonna frankenbite which by the way you don't need yeah. to now you don't need to you can have her say whatever you want you just type it also, into it. Also, if you're gonna ADR it, just get just get the whole take, get the whole thing again. Well, I don't think they do that because I don't think they're gonna go back and reshoot. You know what I mean? I think this gets put together way I, after. But the I'm saying shooting. if it's played, it's played over ponder shots. If it's yeah. just a voiceover, there's no excuse for it to sound so choppy. I agree. In my opinion, there's I so much ADR this season, and it's terrible. Oh, I wrote here, music is old. Hmm. I don't normally notice music but the music for the show sounds old and not modern well some of it did but a lot of it as we'll get to was a commercial for a movie so they were using well, yeah. music directly from the movie we'll get to all of it so jen itms 
uh, that she was sent home the week before hometowns, the last regular season game on Bachelor Season 28, and she knows how it feels, so she assumes that these guys are all feeling uh, serious in the relationship as well, and she wants to talk to somebody who's done it before, and we get a Council of Crowns with none other than Charity Lawson from Bachelorette Season 20 fame, the first post Fleissian season. She's still together with her ring winner, of course, Dotton Olabeko. They meet in a hug in this coffee shop, and we get this little conversation. I thought it would have been so funny if just how she was set in In Paradise. She's just like, let me tell you all the shit about Aaron B. And then she's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would have been hilarious. Oh, it's not that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Sorry. You you want bachelor writing advice? Okay. So they, they have this little um, conversation where basically Jen is describing the traits of all the the guys that are still there. And she's like, Sam's holding back a little. Jeremy, we laugh nonstop, but is there more? Marcus, he's also holding back, hard to be vulnerable. And Jen wants to feel confident in her playoff roses. Charity asks if she sees herself being engaged, and she's like, yes, I'm excited for it. One last hug, and then we see the guys. Coming into Hotel Monaco, throwing their weight around. Marcus is like, this is my old stomping ground. The guys get in that room. Their I love Clevelanding all over. Grant's ITMing that he's falling for Jen. A loaded love level three here just very early in this first portion. The guys are all chatting about the importance of the week leading into hometown. Sam M's excited for Jen to meet his family. Get it? He's getting a little bit of a horror fool score played under him that mm. music so you know immediately this is not going to be a good episode for sam m <laughs> yeah Devin, and it's not <laughs> Devin also idea that sam's cocky and he's always known that there's something different about him all off face terrible frankenbiting they got to get better yeah. at this if you're going to continue to frankenbite I, I implore you please use one or two audio filters that will s smooth it out so that you can't hear the edits it just it's so jarring in my opinion i i agree i don't even know what line this was but i wrote adr off face adr to shit um we see that marcus is going to get his second one on one date can i ask you one question before we get to that did oh, you yeah. see the itm where jeremy is wearing this kind of like a fleece or like fuzzy brown zip up jacket that looks like a full Chewbacca taut. No, you didn't see this. Well, it's worth no. it's worth going back and looking at. In my opinion, I don't think we see this outfit again other than in this ITM, and it's very wild. Sorry. Oh, okay. Well, we uh, <laughs> we see that. Oh, is he gonna get a pretty woman date? He's getting a special blue box with a golden ribbon and no it's a green letterman jacket because we are still fetishizing high school yeah and we uh we start this one-on-one -on -one date jen is obviously looking for him to break down more of his emotional walls on this date um and <laughs> we get this I love this date. I'm obsessed with this date. Look, I loved the Barbie group date mm -hmm. that they did on charity season. Yep. And I think that these dates where you can get a big budget mm -hmm. to do an ad are always a good idea. And when you can make DLP wear this <laughs> green velvet jacket and He's jump off of, of this little train car. Yes. I was obsessed right off the bat. I was like, oh, we're in for a wild ride. I, look, I was too. <laughs> I, I'll kind of like skip to the end and give you my overall impression of this. Then we can go back through piece by piece at, at oh, what good, they good. were doing. Yes. But my overall impression of this was like we've seen where they just drop an ad for something right in the middle of the season. And like you said, the Barbie one was good. I thought the Top Gun one was good. The, the contemporary movie ones that they've done have been pretty good. But it immediately took me back to Ben Higgins season 20 when there was a uh, three on this one is what I guessed. group date. Oh, wait. Huh? Never mind. What do you got? What you it think? It reminded me of the McDonald's yeah. commercial in Ben Higgins. Exactly. Season. But that was a one on one. Absolutely not. It was a three on one between. Oh, that became a one on one? Uh, God, I forget who the other two players was. It was Amanda Becca Stanton. Tilly, Kayla Quinn, and Amanda Stanton. And it was a play for time. 
Amanda Stanton. It was. Yes, Amanda oh my Stanton God, in got my the, mind, it was a one-on-one. the play for time, and the play for time was they forced him to not only take Amanda Stanton to McDonald's for a fine meal and a full McDonald's commercial, they made Ben Higgins and Amanda Stanton get on the drive-thru mics and and do the job of working at, Mount, at McDonald's drive-thru. This is a far cry yeah, from that. I remember them, <laughs> them cosplaying as yes. McDonald's workers during it. And they're, yeah, they're standing was, there. They make Ben I'll Higgins. I'll never forget that date. It was unreal. I, like, I remembered it, but I, I went back and watched the whole thing. It was just like, oh, my God. They make Amanda Stanton and Ben Higgins go in there, order the all-day breakfast menu, because that's what McDonald's was advertising at the time. Yeah. They get uh, sausage McMuffins and some fries. They eat them. And then Ben Higgins is like, you know, it's always been our dream to get behind the counter. And then they get back there and start doing work in the McDonald's. <laughs> I was like, no, it's absolutely insane. So this is a much better commercial. In my opinion, we, we yeah. see uh, DLP jumps off this trolley. He's like, welcome to Seattle. Today's about the magical road to love. Thought it'd be fun to celebrate the new movie wicked, which hits theaters this Thanksgiving. And Marcus delivers a look of shocked amusement in reaction to being surprised by DLP with the information that he will now be forced to engage in unpaid labor as an actor in an advertisement for the movie Wicked was my face play of the game. Uh, it's not... It was almost my face play. <laughs> It's not a super robust face play, but you can see it's real. The look on his face is like, what? I have to act in a McDonald's commercial? Yeah, he's just like, wait, commercial? what have I signed up for? Uh, 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wicked? You're doing a... I've been blown up by by minds, and I'm now doing a Wicked commercial? Yeah, or unpaid. Mine? Unpaid. He got blown up by grenade. Um a grenade. This is a this whole segment probably lasts three to four minutes. If you were the lead actor in a three to four minute national commercial for a giant brand or movie or something like this, you'd be getting paid a decent amount. Mm-hmm. This is zero dollars. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for your time. I would say Jen is doing most of the work in this little sure. wicked commercial. She's the one who says yeah. the the actual phrases. I I did love his face play mm-hmm. here. But Jen he is getting loads paid. emotional walls. DLP is getting paid. Mm-hmm. We're gonna see Kelsey Anderson, Daisy Kent. They're getting paid. Tris is getting They're paid. All getting paid except Marcus. Yep, Marcus is the only person in this commercial who is making zero dollars. <laughs> Um, all right, so yeah, Jenna ITMs uh, this ad for Wicked about her love of the musical. We get some musical score from the the movie as they follow DLP on this trolley and take this tour of the city. And uh, he opens up this curtain DLP does for them. It's kind of this Wizard of Oz world. There's a yellow brick road, these colorful flowers, and Bachelor season 28 superstar and rejector of the crown, Daisy Kent, as well as season 28 ring winner, Kelsey Anderson. These are the two finalists from their season standing there greeting Jen. And they meet Daisy and Kelsey for this little conversation where they basically tell Look at her. this picture I took at the barbecue I was at yesterday. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just anything that has the word Daisy on it now is your. <laughs> no. Wait, did you watch the whole episode I yeah. did? She She booked this campaign. Oh, God, that's right. For the cottage cheese. Simply because of her I name. I took a photo at this barbecue of the Daisy brand sour cream because wow. I had just uh, just recorded the twim in where she, she got that deal. I should change my name to Topo uh, Chico. Yeah. Maybe I could get a brand deal with my favorite drink. BB Girl Topo. <laughs> um, anyway, I love all of the legacy that we are getting. We are getting... Me too. The Council of Crowns with Charity and Trista, and we're getting these ring winner and possible next crown, Daisy Kent, like big names, all in one episode. I was like, this is delightful. Some of these little games. And I they're in these really beautiful little... gowns. Uh, what? Some of the little things they made them do, I thought were kind of like, eh. Uh, the, the picking of the yeah, two boxes. Yeah, don't choose were between like... spicy and sweet. Choose like public or private school for your kids or something like real life decisions <laughs> or something yeah that's right aliens real or not something teach like that. your kids religion or no right <laughs> atheist or satanic aliens um i i will say this though i, I agree with you the, pacey or dawson the uh well don't ask ashley Kennedy. i was i was told by the way dawson is not from dawson's creek it was um 
the last name. I knew it. Of I DiCaprio. fucking told you. It's DiCaprio's character I in Titanic. I told you. You were right. You were right. Um, but because I would have remembered, because I was a big Dawson's Creek fan. A Dawson head, a Creek head. Uh huh. I just again Creek was flashback when all these different we call them Creekies. Creekies. Oh, I didn't know. Um, all of mm-hmm. these different players showing up. Of which there are four. It's again, it's Daisy, it's uh, Kelsey, it's Trista, and it's Charity. They are all part of this, and I just again am flashing back to the, that Ben Higgins day, and it would be like if the McDonald's in season twenty was entirely owned and operated by other players. That would have been a fantastic addition to that season, but they didn't do it. And the rest of the people are the musical people from Wicked, and then they all start singing yeah. together. Like a I golden really felt like we were missing basketball. a musical number in this. Yeah, I agree. But um, they were, they were but playing maybe the songs. At any rate, they do all these little things Whatever. where they're picking this or um, that. Experimental play with the spicy and sweet, though, when they get the hot peppers, I was like, you should just be like, oh, fuck that. I'm not eating the peppers. Unbox the sweet one. No one's stopping you. I totally Look, agree. Kelsey and Daisy are going to do it? Yeah, Throw I totally it off. agree. But Marcus Motorboat is a man of cake. structure and rules. I don't think he has that within him. Um, oh, that's true. So they're making all these choices, and Kelsey and Daisy are watching them and narrating the whole event, saying how good they look together, kind of giving that uh, the support. They have to scream their feelings at one point, choosing a scream box over a whisper box. They each scream a love level one. I like Jen. I like Marcus. And Daisy and Kelsey then are forced to act as though the screaming is so loud they they cover their ears in a shot. Oh, please be quiet. So they're they're having them do some acting on the side there. Uh, they have to make all these choices. The final choice they come to is slow or fast, and she says fast, he says slow. Oh, they slow. have to do a pillow fight, yeah. and they engage in some prone makeout play. Sexy. In front of all these strangers. And who were these strangers? Some, A lot of them were wearing pink jackets. I was like, are these extras? I don't know. I who had that same question. wandering around? Are they just strangers? No idea. Civilians? Um, we then see... Um, she rings this bell, and then Kelsey and Daisy show up on a little pedal cart, and to get, and they, they're like, "Get in and go to the next stop." So they pedal on this bike. They meet Charity at this path. She has a wand. She reminds them, "There's no place like hometowns." Coming up next week, and the next stop, they have to uncover Cute. their past. She hands them the wand, and they're gonna pop these balloons. And I just wrote, "Are we in the goat?" I don't know if you ever watched the goat on Amazon, but I watched no. it all in You said corner. it was so bad, so I didn't watch it's it. It's very bad. All the challenges pretty much involve popping a balloon to find mm. paint inside of it or whatever. I don't, that's not good entertainment yeah. to me. Um, but these balloons are filled with uh, PTC tearjerkers. Mm-hmm. We get this, um, this video message from Marcus's sister. This whole part of the date de- seems designed to get tear play and get these PTCs out. Um, it's kind <laughs> of like the the video messages yeah. that they get on Love Island. I wrote down, man, it's a good thing she picked Marcus for this date. Would have been very weird if she would have picked Jeremy and they had to watch a video of Marcus's <laughs> sister. Uh <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Good I'm just like, like how how is anyone believing at this point that like any of the the selection for who goes on the date or whatever is real? This is obviously very pre planned. I don't know. Whatever, yes. take it for what you will. Yes, and she gets a letter from her mom. They both produce tears here. Um, they they hit her split parents PTC once again. And then we get the last part of this little obstacle course. The fairy godmother of Bachelor Nation, Trista. And she is basically saying to be vulnerable, be honest with what you want, and let your love soar you above the city. And there's a hot air balloon. And I was like, whenever there's a hot air balloon, I am like, this is... Four bachelor clues. Thank you. But I think this was for Kelsey Anderson. Did you see what was on the hot air balloon? Butterfly. A giant butterfly. Her mom. They fly up in the air, still tethered to the ground, but they are there in the I air. Wrote butterfly for Kelsey's mom. I did too. I just wrote Kelsey's mom, question mark. They fly up in the air, although still tethered, and they kiss. But they're not alone as they make out. Very Sean Lowe. 
I know. A hot air balloon pilot stands two feet away, trying his best not to become an unintentional participant in this makeout session. And this hot air balloon pilot, or HABP, was not my Jorge Moreno bystander of the week. Can you believe that? After you gave him all those initials? <laughs> Can you believe that? H A B A B. I can't believe he wasn't my bystander, but he's not. There was a better one later. I can believe it uh, because there was so much in this episode. God, I know. It was jam-packed. It was hard to pick awards at some point. But uh, the Jen ITMs that it's the first hometown rose. She hopes they can get there, but she's fearful still. Marcus has these walls up. And uh, yeah, then after the end of this, I, I just wrote this long thing basically saying what I said up top. But like, usually these paid advertisements are just like fucking crowbarred in and they're so yeah. out of place and terrible. They made the most of this one. This, I think for me... This was the best version of this that I've ever seen in the entire history of the game. I just can't think of a better one. Mm. There was so much Halo legacy. Top. To have it end with Trista was like, oh, God, that's perfect. It's per I couldn't perfect. believe it. My jaw was on the floor. Yeah, it was great. Absolutely great. It was such a such a tribute to legacy and in this episode that's so Sean low coded, I I just I and having DLP dressed up in that little green jacket, yeah. doing all these little, he's the the Wizard of Oz. I, I This episode felt like it was made for me. <laughs> I just. <laughs> I agree. I don't know. I loved it. I have chills. Um, we get back at the house. Jonathan is the postman reading the group date card. Spencer, Jonathan, Sam, M, Devin, and G. Who's G? Grant. Grant. And Jeremy is getting his first one-on-one -on -one and the last one-on-one -on -one of the season. Unreal. What Jeremy did in this episode was, I mean, unexpected doesn't even cover it. I couldn't believe I what I was watching. I literally was going to text you, and then I was like, I'll save it for the pod. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe what I was watching. We'll get into it, obviously. But no. we see then the night portion of Marcus's one-on-one -on -one date. They head to T-Mobile Park. They have it all to themselves. We've seen a private uh, baseball date before. <clears throat> <clears throat> Do you remember where? When? Charity Lawson. Charity Lawson Braden and Bowers. one Braden Bowers uh, had a date. If you can see. Here, I'll, I'll Michelle get Young one moment. and... Hmm. I want to say Joe. Did Michelle Young have one? What are you doing? Sorry, I took my headphones out. I have to show you something. Um, this is an oh. artifact that I have. <laughs> This is a baseball and a note. <laughs> <laughs> this is the baseball that Charity Lawson gave Braden Bowers on this very same day in San Diego back in season 20. I possess it. It's part of the collection. Part of the I collection. I possess it. Not to brag. Sorry uh, to be you. It's just one of my, possession one of of my possessions. <laughs> <laughs> just off his bachelor shelf behind him. It's what simply one of my many possessions. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've got my Tyler Cameron pillow. I've got my Tyler yes, Bowers I have baseball. a lot of possessions. Um, I, look, I'm proud of my possessions. What can I say? I have my painting. Of, uh, <laughs> so, Alex Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually one of my creations, let alone one of my possessions. Jen ITM's a lingering fear that she's further along than he is and she needs him to be more vulnerable. We get this one on one time. They have a little dinner set up on home plate. And she says for her to let her walls down. Last week has been hard, but she uh, wouldn't have been able to do it without him being there. He's opened up about how hard it is for him to be vulnerable. It's a kind of a standoff of, about who's having a harder time being vulnerable here. Mm -hmm. Whose walls are higher? Yeah. My walls. And then um, um, he tells her. Yeah, we talk about, oh, my God. Honestly, I blocked this PTC out. Yeah, it was brutal. so intense. Absolutely brutal. We got this. Um, they're both talking about their their dads not being around, and we get this PTC from Marcus that he was born into a rough situation. He was with his sister, an unstable. His parents were unstable, and they brought us to daycare one day, and then never came back. Jesus. J F C. It was unreal. Just a straight abandonment PTC. I thought this was going to be my play of the game. But I, I did too. I think there was something more impactful later. Um, this guy just has got PTC after PTC. It is absolutely brutal 
um, to hear that anybody had to go through this. And after no, his first PTC so was getting blown up. up by a grenade, I don't know. I'm, I'm like, both of these are absolutely he beats Zach Clark horrible in some ways. Like, yeah, Zach Clark had that five part PTC, but Marcus's PTCs are some of the most intense PTCs I've ever heard. Yeah, and I would like, say that there are that's a lot. I'm do, I'm doing right now. Love is blind. UK includes corner season one which is a fantastic show yes i started watching you watch it last oh, night thank you uh everybody's ptcs <laughs> across the board now seem to be hitting these gigantic levels you don't have anybody coming mm. into these games anymore being like look i don't have some sob story or something i'm just here to find love that's what about jeremy well we'll get to it i don't his wasn't exactly I know, a, a ptc but i'm saying but it's <laughs> it's in that area of like We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Um, yeah. At any rate. I can't wait to get This to was a fantastic game. PTC. And he tells her, ultimately, there's a huge canyon between liking Horrible. and loving somebody. He wants to fall into that canyon. Oh. And and that they went foster home to foster home. Yeah. And he felt like something was wrong with him. Oh, my God. He produces tears. Seals it with those tears. Oh. Oh, this is part of why I thought it was going to be my play of the game. Mm. I produce tears. Damn. I forgot about this, but I write it in the document every time. <laughs> you just have a tears document sure for I yourself. Know. I wrote, I cry. Yeah, went to the or I write pace case tears. Went to get a smoothie today. They were out of blueberries. Pace case tears, something like that. Hey, she picks up. <laughs> yes, it's very much like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I produced tears uh, back in the day when I ate at Subway sandwiches and they didn't have provolone. I produced tears. His vulnerability shows how strong mm -hmm. he is, he, uh, she says to him, and she wants him to know how happy she is that he's there. Can't imagine the journey without him. She picks up that one-on-one -on -one A, Rose, and she asks him to come with her. They walk into the stand. She gives him that one-on-one -on -one Rose he, and tells him- Her that, response to this, by the way, I was like, she's such a good bachelorette. Yeah. Because a, a lot of the trickiness is handling these huge PTCs. No, and she's great. I was like, great. is he the ring winner after this? <sighs> well- should we get into the things that are likely going to come out about any of these men? I've been spoiled. I, yeah. To that. You've been spoiled? Yeah. Oh, to like their background. Yes. Some of the, the, there are things circulating on the internet about three of these guys. Well. Three? Yeah. Three that were in this episode. One of whom went home. Okay. I only know this one. Do you know the Sam M stuff? But I don't know what it is. It's like vague. There's vague accusations against um, Marcus. I don't know the specifics of Marcus either, right. but I think that his stuff is in the area of domestic violence. Sam M is rumored Not, uh, to have had a girlfriend coming in. Oh, I did. And do you want to know the, who the third player is and what the allegations are? I did hear the Sam M... Um, <laughs> I did hear the Sam M girlfriend thing mm. and that he had a date specifically set up to officiate his sister's wedding. So he knew he was never yes. going to be going the whole time. Yeah. That's just okay. a, a four TWR. Do you want to know the third player and the allegations? Oh God. You tell me. I'm trying to think of who is in this episode. Jeremy Grant, Jonathan. It was shocking to me when it I learned of it. Oh, God. Don't say it's Jonathan. It is not. Oh, thank God. Okay. Okay, yeah, tell me. If you don't want to hear, skip ahead. The man's name is Devin Strader. And he oh, is... Oh, I did You know this about one. this? The rap song? I... And all of the, the likes of the, the various rap. posts? I saw the likes. Okay. The, the allegations are... He wanted to be a rapper at some point in his life, and there is supposedly a video of this rap song in which he is rapping the N-word. There is also... Uh, oh, no. All of these liked posts that are, you know, of a certain, let's say, right-wing nature across the board in all cases. Let's say um, <laughs> you're not going to like them. Yeah, so... If you look them up. This season, I mean... 
Sam M, as we saw in today's episode, Ugh. I think is going to get off relatively clean. These other two guys are going further. They're in the playoffs, which means there's going to be more scrutiny yeah. on them. I expect next week this stuff will reach a, a kind of critical mass and pop through the I mean, they're the getting Marcus a top two edit. Absolutely. And I don't know, you know what his side of the story is or anything. I haven't looked too much into any of this. I'm just like aware of mm -hmm. it. It's been brought to my attention by various sources. Yeah. It's, it's starting to bubble up to a point where it's like this is going to be, uh, you know, akin to, a to kind of like the... Um, yeah, the season 19 Eric Schwer blackface photo in his yearbook. I think that's going to reach this level. And then do they address How that or not on the show? How old is this rap video? I don't I'm remember. I, I don't know the, the years of it or anything. I would guess like mid-2000s or something. Um, it, it doesn't matter, though. I mean, it's just the, the visibility. I mean, what is... I mean, I know that Bachelor Nation is so good at sleuthing this mm -hmm. stuff out. But, like, how... How is this the casting? I just don't understand. Like, I don't know. Especially the Devin what is stuff. Going on? Like, these posts aren't. All you have to do is look through his liked post. And it's not like there's one or two. It's a bunch of things that are, again, of that certain style. You can't look you know? at someone's liked stuff. You can't just go to someone's profile and click their likes, right? Uh, yeah, can't you? I don't know. Maybe I'm no. I'm wrong about this. But then, how does Reddit have it? No, how, you, have you have to just have to search the internet. The account, you have to follow them uh -huh. and look at their account and look at that account, mm -hmm. and then you can see their name liked this post. Oh, I see. Well, they should have done it. I don't know. Look, I don't know what to tell you. This is just Whatever the stuff it is that's out that there. The Bachelor audience is doing. They should be doing. Yeah, they need to just basically yes. pick whoever is on Reddit, really finding this shit out, and employ them every season. Yeah. To like go through everybody's Instagram account. Uh, it, it just you can't, ha especially in this season, especially in this season, you cannot have that, and they're gonna have that. You're fucking it up. You are throwing Jen under the bus. Yeah. And then it becomes another situation of like the Rachel Kirkconnell and Matt like, James thing. Specific values, but I'm well, they ain't sure this. They <laughs> are not aligned. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. I mean, I don't know her specific values either, but yeah, I can a hundred percent guarantee she ain't gonna like this. And, well, I don't, and, I don't and know and the details gonna... of Buddhism, but <laughs> exactly. Um, anyway, oh, it's all out there. Oh, that. That's Google it, stressful. find out for that. yourselves, look into this and, and draw your own conclusions. These are simply the, the facts as I'm reporting them, as they've yeah. been presented to me and what I'm finding on the internet. And I try to, uh, you know, at least in terms of like gameplay analysis, keep the two separated. I do think that this show and all reality TV totally. is a little different than like other pro sports in that a kind of part of your identity is a piece of how you play. It's a piece of your strategy in a way that other sports don't exactly have. So he will be made to answer. I don't for know. This, I'm I think, but. like I'm seeing sports, you know, around, and the character stories are a big part of it. Uh, totally, absolutely, I, more than I had thought. Yeah, actually, it's like personality driven. Yeah, no, you're right. I guess it is similar in that way. Um, at any rate, Marcus gets this one on one, and uh, anyway, they uh, they make Marcus Jen say, gets the rose. Yeah, he gets the <laughs> going to playoffs. Exactly. <laughs> we'll see him in hometowns and. They make her <laughs> say it's a wicked cool date, and DLP narrates. Yeah, that was the one. Um, that was the uh, the line where I was like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah, this is the ad." Then they do this thing where they the jumbotron pops up, and we see text on it. We hope you enjoyed your date in the Emerald City. Uh, now look to the western skies, and DLP narrates it. I don't think that was ever on that jumbotron, and DLP obviously was was. You know, Pate to come in and it do this. It did not later. seem like DLP's voice was emerging yeah. from that jumbotron. I agree. There are some things that are so good this season about the production, and there are some things that are just like so bad and kind of last minute pieced together. Like, oh yeah, we'll put a, a fake thing up on the jumbotron, and it's like they're just no, doing it. They should have cut. They should have cut to DLP has been up on the top of the stands the whole time, mm. like Lady Gaga at that one Ooh. Super Bowl. Yeah, and he there's a spotlight on him and then he comes and he descends and he goes, look to the Western sky. That would have been great. That would have been yeah. great. Uh, it didn't happen. Um, next up we get love on air, a radio show. And Jen is with these radio hosts. These and radio hosts. 
You mean Jubal Fresh and Bender of the Bender Nation? Jubal Fresh has 97.6K on Instagram. Bender has 18.7K. These are the hosts of a morning radio show in Seattle. Mm. And For we were also worth. joined by <laughs> Legacy. Another Council of Crowns, a third Council yeah. of Crowns in this episode, Jason Mesnick of Mesnicking, Mesnying, and his second choice for wife, Molly Mesnick, um, also co hosting this radio thing. I, ugh, this episode. It's all in one episode. I, I can't know. believe it. And they're doing our job so for good. us a little bit. They actually give us old footage of the original radio show date that Mesny was on back in <gasps> season 13. Yes. We get to see it in the program. Yes. This is exactly what Bachelor needs to be doing. These other shows are going to start catching up with Bachelor in terms of having a back catalog of legacy footage that they can put in their new shows mm -hmm. that they can reference. Right now, Bachelor has the market cornered because when you see that old footage, it just... it transports you back to a different time before there even Netflix existed, let alone Love is Blind and all the other Netflix shows. Netflix did not exist when Jason Mesny uh, was on that date. It just transports they you to like a different a era. child now, I yeah. think. <laughs> I absolutely loved uh, these legacy plays this episode. Gen Me too. Gen it's like, not only are they hosting, but it's the exact same date. It's yeah. like, that's so much brilliant. attention to detail. It's brilliant. I love when they do the same dates from bygone seasons, but it's not just they're doing the same date and not making mention of it. They're having the people who did the original date come there, host the date, footage Elevated. from the old date. It's exactly how it should be done. Uh, Jen here <clears throat> tells Bender she can see that this process is going to end in an engagement. She tells Mesny that she wants to go beyond the physical with Sam. Jubal asks who she feels safe with, Sam. And then we see the group date. The guys show up to the studio as Jen is saying there's something missing with Sam. They're really hyping up this Sam, Sam, Sam. I mm -hmm. like Sam, but there's something missing. We have a physical Some connection. What else? Sam. And uh, Devin ITMs. There's something telling me he's got a girlfriend. <laughs> Yeah, little does she even know. Sam ITMs that he's chasing what he wants, his dream in life of being a husband and a father. They Frankenbite in that he's going to keep the main thing, the main thing. He didn't say that in this. This is from a prior ITM. I think ITM. he only said this one time, and they just keep playing. I don't know if he ever said it, honestly. They might have just <laughs> made this up. Keep the main thing, the main thing. You just got to use uh, this filter here I wrote. Like, even it out. It can be done simply. Mesny tells them they're going to have fun, but serious conversations. And Bender gives them some rapid fire word association. Spencer, you're up first. Rose, he says, me, Grant, shower every day. What? It's a weird one, I thought. Sam gets fantasy sweet, and he's like, uh, aggressive. And everybody's record scratch, heads turned. What? What are you talking about, dude? What is going on? This, I was obsessed with his performance on this group day. It's so wild. His performance this entire episode. This, to me, was indicative of a man who was like, I cannot go to hometowns. I've taken this as far as I want to go. I can't do it anymore because it's bad. I've Conspiracy got a girlfriend town. back home. I got to get back for, to officiate my sister's wedding. Or that, whatever the case is, th today or this uh, game's performance really struck me as a guy who didn't want to be a, in it intentional anymore. Intentional turn. Yes, that it was like I I can't take it to this next level. Now it's getting kind of serious. Mm. If I go to hometowns, maybe I'll win, and I don't want that. That is what I mean. He just if made I go to no hometowns, sense. There's pictures of me and my girlfriend everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. There are pictures like up in the local shops and stuff. It's the, the couple yeah. of the city. What is this picture, Sam? The couple of the city. It's the main thing's the main thing. I open a coffee shop with it called the main thing. Um, all right. Anyways, we are getting him just doing this kind of word salad uh, as we go it's on. It's like an artistic performance, honestly. It's unreal. What he's doing here. Uh, Jen gives a little open gameplay speech. She ITMs. Um, it's a who loves Jen Moore competition, and she loves it. That's literally the thesis of what the show is. Bender then asks Sam how he feels about <laughs> Jen, and we get this like, uh, I would just say fire and like strong passion. <laughs> what? What's 
that's what I'm saying. Like he's rambling uh, in incoherent nonsense. He this it's man. It's like he's not understanding the questions at all. It's like he's drunk. It's like he's very drunk. Yeah. It makes no sense. That's why I think this can't be real. I think he's trying to just say some words that like won't in his mind appear bad on camera, but that me are kind of meaningless. That's what it felt like. I don't know. At any rate, I, yeah, I it, I have no idea what was going on here, but no uh, one did. Jen IDM, she's confused, and the radio hosts say we're choosing one person. Mm -hmm. This was actually a, a play for time, and the group date winner is Sam M. He needs more time on air to get to know Jen. And we're going to imprison the rest of the guys backstage to watch on screen this singular radio performance, which I loved. It was so funny to see yeah. them laughing at the shit Sam M is saying was delightful. <laughs> I completely agree. I thought that they put this together very well. And those producers, when you're sitting there and Sam M says, when they're like fantasy suites and he goes aggressive and you have to know how to pivot that. How are we going to do the rest of this date to get the most value out of Sam M's implosion? And I thought they did it perfectly. Yeah. There's not a drop left juice in the Sam M performance. They have it all there. They presented it well in the document. I mean, when somebody goes out like this, just floundering, doing weird plays, let us see all of it. And I thought they did a very good job of that, personally. Um. We see them ask these questions. What was your first impression of Jen? And then he is talking around it. Oh, it's it was, um, <laughs> I got out of the limo. I, uh, you know, the unknown. You're, you know, you're not my type. Yes. And this <laughs> was my error, 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 error of the game he says that he thought it would be daisy or maria and i don't you know we're not seeing the questions that are leading into yeah. this who knows maybe they're setting him up but this performance it was between this and the knock knock performance for me but for me this really like started to set it off was totally not being able to to name an a positive adjective about jen no and, to and instead do this <laughs> yeah you're not my type you're stunning but looks fade i'm trusting the process my parents have been together for 30 years <laughs> huh looks fade yeah. you ain't gonna look like that i asked forever. you what your favorite ice cream is sam what's going on here yeah <laughs> jen says everyone wants love that's lasting and real what is it about her that makes him think they can have a future mm. together your selflessness how do you think i'm selfless oh you're either selfless or full of shit idk what yeah you're either selfless or full of shit like holy what? christ what does that mean that's what i'm saying <laughs> like he's he's trying to present these weird like and he did this on their uh skywalk date too this kind of like look i think you're great oh you're a fucking total piece of shit this this kind of weird standoffishness yeah it's a bizarre play style obviously it doesn't work and uh we we see him as you're saying kind of imploding here and ultimately, Jen ITMs that he's giving these vague answers, not answering her question. She's getting frustrated with him. She needs to feel real oh. assurances. Yes. Little missed opportunity here from the other guys who are watching when they're like, oh, I could name five. I could name 10 examples of Jen being selfless. Yeah. I was like, just name them. Say them to the fourth yeah. audience right now. Or Prove your 4TR. They're right. in that little room. No I'm sure you could have found some way, some button to press so that your voice can come on the intercom in the room that they're in and just Even force better. yourself into the day yes. every time. I, I got that one, yeah. Sam. Why don't you let me handle it? This is Devin, by the way. Uh, you are beautiful, you are intelligent, you are stunning, and you light up any room you walk into. How's that one for you, Sam? Yeah. All right, we'll be listening. They should have let him Good do luck. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, um, he ultimately ends this. He's like floundering. He's like, look, honestly, my love language is physical touch. Then he just leans <laughs> in and kisses her. This felt very bad to me. Almost my play of the game. <laughs> God, play of the game. This was No, I just, this kiss was so hilarious. I just... 
the impulse to do that like in front of the the radio all the radio hosts and jason and molly oh my it's God, his only it's play so that he good. has this isn't just about i feel like for him the the kiss move the, the hardcore chemistry play is not just about like um kind of keeping jen quiet so that she's not going to ask any more questions it's so that he can stop talking he understands yes. his speech play that's is bad what he's doing but that's what i'm saying like Somebody who who is aware enough to know that their speech play is bad, and so they're gonna circumnavigate by just going straight chemistry. He knows what he's doing is is not what he should be doing. That is, mm. if he has an awareness of it, then he also probably knows what he should be doing, but he's unwilling to do that thing for some I don't reason. No, I'm also like, I don't know. Maybe this has worked for him so far. You know, in dating. what? Who's just who's like, he dating that this works I'm for? Talk around, and like. <laughs> Hey, hey, honey, what do you want to get for dinner tonight? Listen, I either want to eat something really good or you're a dipshit. I mean, like, <laughs> who, who's this working on? I want to get pizza or you're just stupid as hell. Honey, I'm sorry. I was distracted thinking about how fucking ugly you're going to be yeah. in 20 years. Do you want to go see a movie tonight? <laughs> you're absolutely selfless. Huh? I, I just don't, <laughs> I don't think this is working anywhere on planet Earth. Portion five begins. It's the night. Uh, it's the after party. Jen's addressing the guy. She says the day was so fun, seeing how we can all fit into each other's lives. Grant starts the salvo of ITM. Something's off with Sam. Hey, I'm going to tell Jen how I feel. It's real. We get the one on time, one on one time with Grant. He love level threes her in it. I am falling in love with you. A couple kisses here. We get some one on one time with Jonathan. He love level ones her. My feelings. I'm oh, sorry. Which which radio host had the silver hair? Uh, that was Bender. Bender was my <laughs> Jorge, 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 Jorge Moreno bystander of the week. Wee, 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 wee. I, I mean, extracting this performance of Sam M just deserves an award. I agree. I agree. Yeah, you're right. He probably should have been mine too, but he wasn't. My there Jorge is, is coming. One, but... Yeah. <laughs> we see Jonathan gets this one on one time. He issues a love level one, gets a kiss. Spencer gets some one on one time. Uh, he thanks her for letting him know that she sees him. And she says he's given her so much more than any of her previous relationships. We get a kiss, but not enough to stick around. One on one time with Devin. He love level ones her. Then he love level threes her. I'm falling. Or no, sorry, she does. She says, you've said you're falling in love with me. And I'm falling for you as well. That's her first love level three of this season. And Devin gets it. I wonder if she's seen his rap song. He says he has such a strong sense of who she is Doesn't in such a like short it. amount of time. No, it does not seem like it. Do you think that's going to be the hometown? He's like, come on in. And he gives her the performance of that song. It's He just has like, Mandy J. Jeffries has that pageant room. He just has like his <laughs> rap career room yeah. with like his different mu musical trophies. Fake gold albums and stuff. Um we see the other guys here. Then Devin is asking Sam if he thinks her concern over someone who needs to be more truthful was about him. And Devin is ITMing that the main thing was not the main thing today. Jen isn't playing games. She pulls Sam for this chat. And then ITMs again. There's something not connecting with him. And we get this long conversation here uh, with Sam. In which he opens up with a how you doing. She says she needs to be honest with him, and it feels like he didn't see her or understand her, even though they had such great chemistry since night one. She needs answers about how he feels. She needs clarity, the invocation of clarity. She says, the word I gave you today was selfless. He says he needs that. He keeps clearing his throat through, like, every third word during this. Mm, uh, well, mm, I'll just, um. Mm. He says he doesn't know it's her, but he trusts that he's there for a reason. <laughs> like, you, never are you saying on The Bachelorette, like, well, look, I don't know if it's, I'm going to wind up with you or whatever, but I'm here for a reason. And that could be Instagram. Uh, I don't think you should be saying any of this. And she's like, how do you fit into all of this? How do we fit together? He says it's a tough feeling. It's just something that he feels. Yeah, but why me? He shakes his when, head. When she's... When... Uh, how do I fit into that? Sam M does a hard squint and he throws his hands up over his eyes. And this was my face play of the game. Yeah, that was very close to mine as well. <laughs> he was, look, the guy went out in a, a blaze of glory. He did give us some things to be happy about here. He, oh, I love a blaze of glory. But ultimately, um, he throws this Hail Mary at the end of this. She's like, what is it about me? And he's like, Ugh. 
I love you. Love level four was my error, 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 error of the game. This to me, fair enough. <laughs> Sam's love level four, just out of nowhere after a day of speaking gibberish, was it was just uncalled for. And I get what he's trying to do here. He's trying to validate his play so far. He's trying to say to the fourth audience, mm -hmm. I, Jen's he's not buying it. He's trying to save it. his game. He is. He's trying to go out as a victim because he can feel the tide turning. He knows he's about to get sent home in this game. Uh, and he's trying to throw one last thing in there that like, look, no, I am here for the process. It worked. I did fall in love. She, however, looks skeptical and side eyes him. And he says, look, it's extremely scary feeling to me. <laughs> she, she she ideas frustration and confusion <laughs> and uh basically this ends with her base just saying like this ain't gonna be it um she ITMs there's no logic there she says she thinks they need more time to get on the same page he gets a hug no kiss and you know that ain't a good sign and then she returns to the guys to tell them all no group date rose because she has to be 100 percent with what she's feeling see you at the rose ceremony this is the second oh, group date rose of the season she has eliminated she has denied mm -hmm. these players the privilege of getting that zero pointer i don't generally like this honestly i don't either but the producers uh, are the ones doing it it's just rose math they want to have one more rose yeah. to, to ratchet up the suspense of this rose ceremony leading into playoffs and, and i get the feeling that they um had they made jen keep sam m longer than she might have intended oh for sure and um it was just it was such an unforced error this this love level four and the radio performance it was oh, it's great um we see the next portion the guys are having a chat in the hotel about sam m where is sam m he's wandering the streets alone with a <laughs> ring on a string on his necklace i wrote that too i literally wrote we see sam m wandering the streets of seattle alone <laughs> I'm like, okay, they just, like, let him go. Yeah. Uh, Sam, we're going to need you to just walk around the street for a couple hours we're staring into the sky. That. If you could just do that for us just for an hour or two. They probably just got 24 hours of Sam M footage. Sam, yeah. we're going to need you to go and uh, talk to all these people. We're going to need to get some more of that that was grunts that we can put in on ADR. Can you go eat some McDonald's all day breakfast by yourself for a couple hours? He ITMs. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Go to another legacy spot. It's Jeremy's one on one. And we are at the farmer's market at Pike Place. When, one moment, right before they get there, when they meet, he's walking to her and he goes, You're supposed to run and jump. And they laugh about oh, this. Yes. They make fun of the hooju. Do the oh, hooju. We haven't had one hooju all season. We better have some hoojus in hometowns. We're going there to. Better be I feel like hometowns. I saw a hooju in a promo. I think I did too. Um, Jen also fondles some random fruit at the beginning of this. Mm. Thought that was interesting. Fruit fondling. Um, when in Seattle. And what? When in Seattle. Well, the legacy of this, that sh infamous Sean Lowe and Catherine Giudici Lowe date where they did this throwing of the fishes where the guy's catching the fish and it was Jen her sets up her storyline with Jeremy that they have fun together. She's going to see if there's a deeper emotional connection. If I may. If you may, you may. One of these fish throwing guys. I, look, I'll just say this. Did I go back and watch the entire hometown date of Catherine Giudici and Sean Lowe from season 17? Yeah, sure did. They do all the exact Jeez. same things. I had to be certain. The whole I had to be certain of my theories. I had to test my theories. I had to be certain. They basically do the entire same day. Take me to the airport. They even are at the exact same fish vendor in season 17. And I don't know. I wow can't be positive of this. But with my scrutiny, what I was able to detect is that there is at least a, I would say, 75% likelihood that the guy standing behind the counter with Jen and Jeremy, 
while they are catching fish was the exact same guy standing behind the counter with Sean Lowe and Catherine Giudici in season 17. And that guy, whether I'm right about this or not, was my Jorge, 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 Jorge Moreno, bystander of the week. He looks even very care. similar. It could be true. He looks very similar. Couple years added. If it's the same stand, he might own I mean, it or something. I don't know. Maybe, yeah, family business days. <laughs> I don't know. I was waiting for them to go in a photo booth. I was mm. like, they're going to recreate every aspect of this date. Um, yeah, I didn't like him making fun of the hooju either. And Jeremy then asked this lady if he can make a booth bouquet for jen he is going all out he is like this is my <laughs> only one-on-one -on -one date you gotta look at the statistics and be like i'm going home you gotta leave it all in the field yeah and he crangles her this bouquet they're like playing around they go to a spirit guide palm reader who <sighs> you know was almost well, my bystander as well right before that they go to and they go to something else they go to a psychic chicken who lays an egg Ooh. with a fortune in it that reads, lives are not meant to be built on laughs alone. And this psychic chicken was my creature of the week. I don't think we've ever seen a psychic oh. chicken in our beloved game. And uh, uh, the first psychic chicken is going to get the creature of the week from me. That's just how it goes. Oh my gosh, we have a different creature. Yeah. I thought we had the same one. Then they oh, hit this. Oh, we learned these facts about Jeremy by his hands that he was a drummel, a drummel, a drummer, <laughs> and a martial artist. Yeah. I mean, I no no slight to this psychic. Um, did the producers just tell her that he used to drum? He was a, also I did martial know. arts. I don't he was that. I don't know. You don't think she can tell? What kind of hobbies you've done by your hands? Maybe she can. Maybe she's that good. I don't know. Do you think she could tell I did karate till I was 11? Ooh. I was a red belt, three stripes, almost a black belt. If she can't, then she needs to be in another line of work, in my opinion. Uh, She'll be like, two stripes, yeah. I'll Go slap. find her. I'm looking for the three psychic. Stripes. You show up in Seattle at Pike Place yeah, Market. Yeah, I should have gone to the psychic chicken. Not yeah. the, <laughs> <laughs> the psychic chicken would know I had three stripes. <laughs> um they go to the gum alley and jeremy touches it disgusting and they go back to the fish and this man throws them the fish and this fish that gets oh. thrown about all episode that might be the same fish that sean and Catherine judici low threw to each other was my creature of the week, 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 week. <laughs> I thought for sure. Jeremy then catches it with his martial artist hands mm. and kisses the fish. Great, great play, yeah. I thought. I would say one thing that I would do as an experimental play, and I thought this back in season 17 as well. When the fish is coming, you pretend like you're going to catch it, but then you, you try to catch it with your mouth. You try to bite it out of the air and just get whacked <laughs> in the face with it and go down, get some damage on you. Uh, you can IFI yes, there. Yes, touch ground. I thought it was supposed IFI. to bite it. Um, they go to eat yeah, some lunch. <laughs> yeah, like you completely misunderstand yeah. what you're doing. Huh? <laughs> I was salmoning. You're supposed to catch it. Um, he does the worm here. They're oh, when they dance God, around. Yeah. That was pretty impressive, actually. He also made a couple of jokes yeah. here about one here where they go in the gum alley, and uh, he's like, "Is this where you're gonna kill me?" I thought that was a great inclusion and funny. He rehits that joke later. Great callback. Then we get this uh, mm. lunchtime, they're eating, and he's asking her about how yesterday was. She says she had some confusion and frustration. We know she's talking about Sam M. And he says, well, I'm glad we're here together. I feel strong about where we are, and we can just be ourselves around each other. She calls him Jer Bear. She did that a few times as well. He ITMs that he's excited mm, to nickname. bring her home. That's a good sign. I agree. They do some food play with some chicken tendies, yep. and then they kiss. Yep. And we see... Uh, the next portion, we get the dinner for Jeremy. Oh, and This location. They, so oh, beautiful. The, the Chihuly Museum of Glass. It is absolutely gorgeous. 
sometimes we the producers go there. I know it made me want to go to Seattle immediately. I'm like, that's cool as hell. They're doing yeah. a very good job this season of finding these kind of grand locations in whatever city they're in for our players to have their one on one dates. I absolutely love this. Kudos to the producers for uh, for going. Yeah, to this whoever location. is doing the locations is is killing it. This was one of the coolest things ever. Yeah. I was yeah, I was like, I gotta get to Seattle. Um, they, you know, talk about getting, getting deeper, uh, and we get a bunch of, a bunch of lines off face and I'm like, ugh, okay. And, um, Jen says that he makes her laugh and she loves spending time with him. And, um, he said he he plays this like mom play that his mom is going to love her. She would do anything for the people. I love this future casting into hometowns. Mm-hmm. You should act as if you are already meeting the family. Yeah, I agree. And we get this introduction of his Jewish his Jewish culture and they they do this mirror kind of overbearing mothers play. Um and we learn that <laughs> his Jewish grandfather was a famous rabbi in Lithuania and died in World War II. I think it was his for refusing to great leave. Grandfather, did he not say? Maybe I got this wrong. Does he not say it's his grandmother who had a famous rabbi grandfather that wouldn't leave Lithuania? What does that make? Oh. Is that a triple grandfather? What does that mean? Great, great. But Joe Biden was born in like 1940. So how is that possible? What? I have no idea. What do you mean? What does Joe Biden have to do with this? I'm so confused. Now you're pulling a Sam M on me. What's going I'm on? It's like, that's the grandfather age. A grandmother of Joe Biden would be like Abe Lincoln. I don't know. I don't I know. know. I just learned this Joe Biden fact, which was yeah. uh, about a podcast Jake was listening to, which mm-hmm. was that Joe Biden is closer to when he was born to Abe Lincoln's presidency than to his own. Holy Christ. That's that is that absolutely wild. I don't know how the ages work out. I don't even know if I heard this right, but we definitely know <laughs> that there was a somewhere in Jeremy's family, a famous rabbi who uh, stayed in Lithuania during World War II to a tragic end. This ancestral PTC by Jeremy was my play, 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 play of the game. You know, it's not necessary. It might be his grandfather. It might be this person that he doesn't even know. But he is able to both incorporate his his the things in his culture that are important mm-hmm. to him today. It's yeah. able to be, you know, somewhat of a PTC to like add gravitas and weight because he knows like they're the fun couple. They got to have some more heavy talks about faith and religion and stuff. And um yeah, I just thought this was a, a very strong PTC, and we'll and we'll see yeah. um, we'll see what it leads to. I had a slightly kind of altered view of it, I suppose. I mm-hmm. I mean, I guess it is a, a ancestral PTC, but to me, I just deemed it all Jeremy's cultural heritage play was my play 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 of the game because I think it was mm. like. Well, he's talking about his own family is certainly important, but then also how he handles Jen Tran saying, well, I'm Buddhist and I want my kids to be that as well. And he's like, great, we'll have some Jewish Buddhists and and kind of like mixing mm-hmm. it together with hers. I just thought what he did here exactly fit what she needed from him, that it's not just about yeah. laughing and fun all the time. He can be serious and there are parts of his uh, history or his, his personality that are a little more grounded. And... I, yeah, I gave and it he's already game. thought about how they're going to mix religions for their kids. Yeah, and while Marcus's um, PTC, his abandonment PTC was just like off the charts, this to me was a better play because Marcus has already kind of solidified like I have a very serious backstory. Jeremy, we don't really have any idea who he is and he's kind of been a floater, honestly. I had I would have never thought this guy's making it to hometowns, and I thought this was why never he did it. Never in a million years. I have been for weeks being like, I can't believe Jeremy's still here. Yeah. And he's going to hometowns. I'm like, that's part. That's why this is my play of the game. It's like mm-hmm. clinching this. I thought for sure this was an elimination. Yeah. And then we even get Jen saying a the Hebrew word for family. I'm going to attempt this. 
my apologies if I mispronounce it, Mishpacha. I don't mm. know if I did well or not. But Jeremy does get that She's rose, good. and uh, he, she ITMs again. She's excited to meet his Mishpacha. And she ITMs that he, he surprised her. He's exactly what she's been looking for and what she deserves. Is he like, I just don't see this in any world that they wind up together. I could be wrong, but it seems very unlikely to me. I, I thought there was no world. He's making it to hometown. Yeah. I wrote no fucking way. Same. Dark horse of the season. Absolutely. Hats off to him. Didn't see it coming. And he's kind of just bided yeah. his time, waited in the cut, and now he's going I to playoffs. Obviously, underestimated Jer Bear. Uh, indeed. Um, so then we come into they portion. They go eight. and make out outside oh, under the needle. I can't believe they didn't make her jump off of this thing. They have had her do all of these horrible heights things. Yeah. They just go to every city in the world that has a giant tower, and they make her jump off of it. Come yeah. on, Jen, just one more tower. We're doing the tower tour. We can be at portion eight here. And, Surprise, Sam M's at the top uh, to yell at you to do it. In portion eight, we see that this is the, the teaser, basically, that we opened with. She's going around looking for Sam M and goes to do this knock-knock in his room. And we just watch the end of his horrible, horrible, error-laden episode. They're sitting on the couch, and she's like, how are you feeling? I'm terrified. He says he's sorry for how that date went. I'm trying to walk this fine line of being vulnerable and protect my feelings. It's like, that is a fine line, dude. Those are the opposites. No, he literally <laughs> seems like an AI made human who like watched a bunch of The Bachelor yeah. during this episode. And it's just like... Just well, spitting like, it out. Uh, yeah. Shoot. It does seem like that. She's like, I thought you would honestly take back the love level four. And he's like, no, I meant to say it. And she's like, what does love mean to you? It's selfless, sacrifice, making sure the person knows you're the only person I see. And she's like, you're saying all the right things, but I don't believe you. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> it's hard having to put my feelings in words. That's not my strong suit. And he says there are no words he can say to describe his love. His words downplay the actual love. Everything, however, will reveal itself to her and become evident once you see him with his family and friends, which, of course, we know is not going to happen. And... His main thing he loves about Jen is she's looking for love yeah. and wants a family just like him. Main things I like about you is human, alive, like me. <laughs> Didn't work out for him. We see, uh, she's like, look, I, I see something in you. What do you see in me? And he's like, I could see your desire for a family. <laughs> there are people out there with the same characteristics as you, he says. He says, <laughs> like, There's other people who have the same characteristics as you. Oh my god! You got two line. eyes, <laughs> a nose, a mouth, similar to other humanoids. Uh, but you know, you like family, and can we make out now? I mean, th th it's just—it's so <laughs> bad. God for another kiss. He's talking in circles. He just keeps going, and ultimately, like Maria and Daisy wouldn't ask me so many questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he pauses at, at a certain point he's like you have no idea how much i appreciate you and now i see it i love you he love level fours her again and she's like oh ah, jesus yes love level one love level four she, right after she can't her. take it anymore she's like i i gotta take a second she gets up and then she tells a producer walk off yeah it was fantastically done she tells this other producer uh, out in the hallway it's just words it's not doing it and portion nine begins the guys are all talking about what they think's going on uh, with this conversation because they of course were forced to watch Jen come in and be like where is Sam M producers made sure they mm -hmm. saw it and we Jonathan was just trying to do his crossword yeah uh, we ultimately see Sam and Jen have this conversation again another part of it and it ends with Jen basically saying look I've had to teach other guys how to how to do this how to communicate how to be in love and I have closed that chapter in my life I am done with mm -hmm. it they hug and she walks off. Sam. Just like Michelle Young, my teaching days are over. Ooh, served. Ooh, they, uh, sorry. They <laughs> <Not that>. no. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> they hug and she walks off. And Sam immediately starts packing his stuff, folding up his shirts, ITMing frustrations that he didn't think he was going to go home, but her energy was dull. So he immediately insults her. This is like a sour grape saying, You never want to do this. He's just compounding error on error. And uh, he says he stands 10 we tone. We get the main thing line again. Yeah, 10 toes down on his main thing. And then he wheels the suitcase into the street. Jen talks to some producers about her definition of love. She's so mad at her intuition about being uh, 
or her, that her intuition about Sam was wrong. He didn't get to know her. It was mainly physical. He gets in a car and drives off. He gets no real exit speech. They kind of gave him a villain's exit, honestly. Mm-hmm. Portion 10. Oh, they gave him a oh, villain edit this whole season. Villain edit, fool edit. Um, so our dream is Maybe dashed. Maybe they found out about the girlfriend. Yeah, possibly. Our dream is dashed here to see a Sam M. Devin finals, unfortunately. I don't know. The rivalry seemed to fizzle out anyway. Yeah, it really did, unfortunately. But Sam M. was an interesting um, player. But I enjoyed it. I did too. And I hope that we see him in paradise in uh, 2025. I think there is a chance for him. We'll see. Then we get the rose ceremony here. There are four guy, four roseless guys, I should say, and two roses on the table. So two men are going to be executed. Jen gives a speech this week in Seattle has been insightful. Her perspective on love is changing, and this week has really changed. That's why Sam had to go. She knows her husband is in this room. The rose ceremony begins. Devin gets that first flower. DLP comes in for the final rose tonight. Dark touch rendered. Jonathan gets the last and second flower, meaning Grant and Spencer. Take a moment and say your goodbyes. I didn't see Grant coming. Spencer was like, whatever. No. He hasn't been in the show hardly at all. Other than his one-on-one, which was kind of boring no, and eventless. I for sure thought Grant was in it. I did too. That love level three tier play he did last week was so strong. Yeah. I mean, but it's just, it's what Jeremy did this week. I feel like it was that four spot. They were all fighting for it. Mm-hmm. And Chair Bear pulled it out. Yeah. It shocking. It was fantastic. Um, and we get this interesting thing happen after Spencer leaves. He produces tears and calls his mom, and uh, his mom STCOs him via speakerphone. He's like, I'm being sent home. She's like, oh, baby. And she's like, oh, baby, oh, baby. It was very interesting. Like, I'm like, we've person. never seen this before. I loved it. They gave never it was even like heard a about full edit on mom. the way out, though. Like, why is why does he get a phone? Nobody else is getting their phone to call their parents? No, I don't this know. This is straight fool was... edit. I felt bad for him. He shouldn't have done this, in my opinion. Mm. Um, I yeah. thought, interesting, I would like to see a phone call with each person after they're kicked off. No. Yeah, you get your one phone call. It's like going to jail. Yeah. Do you think Grant Ellis is in the conversation for Crown? Yes. I do too. I think he's got an outside yes. shot. Of anybody who's coming out of this season, I think he's probably at the top of the list just based on all the other stuff we were talking about, yeah. the, the things that are going to emerge about some of the other front runners. I think he's right. in the conversation, but I also don't know if he did enough to warrant it. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. He was a I great player, I would say though, he's definitely in the conversation. I mean, I'm trying to think of who would be over him. I would think maybe Jonathan. If he's yeah. not the ring winner. Possibly. Um, he's the only clean <laughs> hometown person. I'm so hardcore pulling for Blake Moynes, but we get then the teaser um, for the hometowns. Who else? Is there anyone else? I don't think so. Old Aaron Herb. I mean, I would like to see Dylan, but he's got to age up a little bit. Yeah, I agree. He's too young to wear crown. We see this um, teaser in the end. Jeremy is pushing Jen Rogers. around a uh, grocery store in a shopping cart. She plays lacrosse with Jonathan in his hometown. Uh, His sister tells him to play big to win big. Marcus has tears. Sisters have tears. Devin love level fours. We get kisses, dad issues, and other guys attack. Mom's issue attacks. Marcus gets an American flag in the background of a dad hug. And the guys are in line for heartbreak. And that's the end of this program. Oh, you know what? The... The reason why I was like, oh, I think Grant has an outside shot is I remember when we were doing the the photo breakdown mm-hmm. with um, your mom and dad podcast and yeah. Jess saw Grant's photo and was like, oh my God. Right. So. Yeah, maybe. We don't know. Could be. Who's your MVP? You're, pu- you're pushing case? for Moines though. I think Moines is, is at the top of the list at this point. Just because he's got so much invested in the game. I believe he is single. And he's got an interesting story about I fly around the world and help save baby elephants and all this. Like, I I just think there's a dynamism to him that so far, at least, none of these players in Gen season are, like, close to it. And the ones who do have interesting play styles, like Devin, 
he, for my money, is like the most interesting player this season. Now we yes. are starting to get these these emerging things about him. Even more interesting <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's made more interesting <laughs> in a bad way. But um, I just think that it completely negates any chance he's got to maybe even go to no. paradise. Like, I he's, think he may be out, out of the franchise after this stuff comes out. What? Yeah. How do you... Interesting. I wonder if he's going to be made to answer for it like um, Becca Kufrin's ring winner. Oh, yeah. Garrett Yagurian. I think mm-hmm. he might have to... I just... You remember what happened when Eric Schwer, the Blackface High School yearbook incident, was completely swept mm-hmm. under the rug at the end of season 19. Ruined their relationship with Michelle Young. Yes, Michelle Young was in the audience that night at the After the Final Rose. She was assured by producers that that would be addressed live there on the set. And instead, it was never even brought up. And supposedly, she left the, the set. She walked out of there and was like, I'm done with Bachelor Nation. You can't do that again. And so if there yeah. is problematic stuff that's coming out about these guys, I think they have to make them answer for it. I think they will have to do yeah. that, especially if he I is agree. a ring winner, um, especially. They, they can't You think he might be it. the ring winner? I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying that's what Eric Schwer was. Um, right. And they have oh, this right. history in this game now of people making it very far into the game who have shit like this in their past. And... Rachel Kirkconnell's another one, a Matt a James history. season, <laughs> um, you know, and I like whatever these, these things are in the past and like Matt James's and Rachel Kirkconnell's relationship is whatever it is to them. I'm not, you know, th- that's their business, but at least in terms of what the show is and what that season was, it was like that whole thing almost unraveled the franchise itself. And so mm-hmm. they have to do better about casting, specifically where things like this are concerned, oh God, specifically yeah. in seasons like this, that they're promoting as like historic change is happening in Bachelor Nation and we're yes. more inclusive and better representation and all of this stuff. And it's like, well, but what's this? You didn't even look at this guy's yeah. likes. You didn't check to see all if he was doing cast? rap music that is maybe offensive to most people. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say about it, but... Um, I- these things are going to come out. It's like, why Why is this the casting? We're not getting this shit all the time about the Love Island people. No, exactly. Of course. And I don't get it either. Like, as I'm watching Love is, is Blind UK, it's just not a part of those things. You know, these types of scandals aren't a part of those shows. They have their own scandals, mainly about producers Mm -hmm. wrongfully imprisoning people and uh, denying them food and water and access to medicines when they're violently ill. Mainly those things. It's more torture-based. Locking them up with a man with a gun. It's not about casting. It's how they treat the players after they cast them. But I I just don't know, ultimately, you know, what the, the kind of final verdict will be on this season in terms of these things. But I think in the next week basically these things are going to start to come to a real head i think you're going to start to see the bigger kind of coverage outlets us weeklies and peoples and stuff reporting on it it hasn't reached that yeah because if they make it to if they make it to playoffs there's so many more eyeballs yeah and there's going to be tiktoks about it all and all that stuff right now this is kind of in the reddit sphere but yeah i think playoffs once it makes it to tiktok you're it's over like it's going to be everywhere that song, I haven't seen the, the song, but supposedly there's a video with oh, him God. singing in it. And I, I I mean, if that's on the internet, it's there forever. We will see. At any rate, thank you for joining us. Wow. For this. Who was your MVP pace case? Wowie. For his um, pretty perfectly played when in Rome day in the life play for his ancestral PTC and making it to playoffs. I completely underestimated him. Jeremy was my M M M M V P P Jeremy was also my M M M M M V P for the reasons that you mentioned and for the fact that they gave him that sacred fish catch with, I believe, this very same (laughs) overseer who watched Sean Lowe effortlessly use his college football skills to catch three fish in a row. Also, I will note this. In those dates, the guys caught the fish 
The women drop the fish in both dates. What does it mean? Patriarchy is still alive and well. <laughs> you don't think they had video of those guys dropping the fish? Yeah. And Jen catching it? They put like uh, butter or grease on Jen's fish just to make sure she couldn't catch yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Throw the fish extra this hard has to at be Jen. Exactly like Sean Lowe's season. Jen can't catch it. I want to see a 98 mile an hour fastball fish. Um, anyways, thank you so much for joining us, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that is our program. We will be back this Friday with this week in Bachelor Nation covering all this news. And like I said, I think it may be this week that some of the stuff starts to get aggregated into the larger news sphere. But if you're curious, curious about anybody, it'll uh, make it to digging deeper. Let's see. Oh my God. Somebody sent me a time code and a clip. I, be- I forget what podcast this was even on, but supposedly there is a-, a revelation about a fight that grocery store Joe had in paradise that was removed from the program. Ooh, like a, a physical altercation. So hopefully we'll have a clip of that. What? Deeper. Physical? Yes. Grocery? Yes. No. Oh, no. yeah. If it comes to blows, like I'll go ten toes down. That was my grocery. I love thing. mothers. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? Thank you for joining us again. And uh, we will see you at the end of the week with This Week of Bachelor Nation. Praise be Dark Lord Palmer. Please rate this podcast. Please review this podcast. Please get a friend to listen to us. And then please rate this podcast. Please review this podcast. Please get a friend to listen to us. And then please rate this podcast. Please review this podcast. Please get a friend to listen to us and then.